Does anybody think that uh, anything is going to get any better if Trump or Clinton gets elected? I don't think anybody believes that. I think if Bill Weld and I get elected, um, I think at least uh, there's a fighting chance that uh, both sides might actually come together. Governor, Governor how do you tap into that? Uh, Hillary Clinton's disapproval rate is in the mid-50s, Donald Trump's in the mid-60s. Uh, how do you tap into that disavowal disaffection that Americans have with the current political class as it is today? Well, the only way that we're going to get elected is to be in the presidential debates. Now, I realize the deadline's coming up on debate number one, but uh, from a polling standpoint, we continue to go up in the polls. So just because we're out of the first debate, and I'm, I'm hoping that they don't exclude us from the debate, I think it's... Uh, I think it's an injustice when currently we're representing 18 million voters, and that somehow we should be that we should be representing 21 instead of 18. Well, I think if we were in the presidential debates and 100 percent of America knew who we were, um, that I would be the next president of the United States. Well, I how, do you get, what is the how do you get people to go from not liking the current candidates, the current major party candidates? and that dislike to actually casting a vote for you? Well, currently 70%, and, and this, is, this is going up every single day, but currently 70% uh, of America doesn't even know that there's another party running. And that bodes well for actually getting introduced to that 70% because, um, you know, I, I think the worst thing people are going to say about me in New Mexico is I disagreed with everything that that guy said, but you know what? I liked him and he was honest. In Syria, Bashar al-Assad, should he be allowed to rerun as president of Syria following a peace deal? You know, I, I don't have an opinion on that, but I would assume that uh, his life would be in jeopardy unless he were allowed to do that. And if it's not part of that deal, uh, I don't see him uh, extricating himself from Syria. How's, How's your health? Thing? How's my health? Since that seems to be the big topic that everybody's concerned about these days for presidential candidates. Well, if I'm not uh, elected president, I plan to ride the divide next summer, which is a 3,000-mile mountain bike race from Banff, Canada to Antelope Wells, New Mexico, on the Continental Divide. So. I may fall over dead tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to happen. I do believe I w will be the fittest um, president of the United States, bar none. And I am, and I dedicate my l life to health and wellness. I I'm in the one percent of one percent. What is the mechanism that, you, as you understand it, to qualify? What should we expect over the next week? Or well, so? what, the, what they've said is to be, that you have to be at 15% in five polls. I'll ask you all something that I, have, that I know what your answer is. There has not been one poll conducted in this country where my name has appeared on the top line. Not one. <laughs> if Mickey Mouse were on the top line of any poll done nationally, Mickey would be at 30% because Mickey's a known commodity. But Bill Weld and I are the only third-party candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. And given the fact that we're polling right now at 13%, shouldn't we be on the top line? And then 99% of the media, and I'm not saying you're guilty, but it's just the reality. The reality is, is that the media just reports the top line. That's all they report, so that 70% of people only believe this is a two-person race. And I'm not, I'm, I, this is not an indictment. It's the way it is, uh, and it's uh, what has to be overcome, and I'm not complaining, because I think we are going to actually overcome it. Governor Johnson, earlier, uh, many former college students who were formerly supporting Senator Sanders, they've jumped into your pool. Why do you think that is? Well, it's, it's heartening to hear that that is the case. I've always, you know, with Bernie and myself, we agree on so many things, uh, on social issues, on, on the fact that crony capitalism is alive and well, that you can buy favoritism. Let's stop dropping uh, bombs. Uh, that's Bernie. I think government can create equal opportunity. If you're looking for income equality, Peter taking from Paul and the government trying to arbitrate that, I don't think that's effective at all. That's picking winners and losers. 
but government can step in and give each and every one of us the same opportunity that someone else has that has money and influence. Um, and so I hope that's I hope that's the reason. When Mitch Daniels have a role here to describe himself as a libertarian public education, is there an evolution with you in, in your republicanism that's brought you to the libertarian? I think I think well I think so. I think that um, I, I think this is the end of the Republican Party. I, I do. I, I I believe that. Uh, and um, myself I've self described myself as a libertarian since nineteen seventy one and Bill Weld's done the same thing. So I'm heartened that Mitch actually said that too, because it appears as though he really did make a difference in this state. And I was also, I wasn't kidding. Uh, it's great to be a former governor and, you know, everybody's waving. You know, not just. Not just <laughs> <laughs> you What's your message that to Hoosier voters that will hear this conversation? What do, you, what do you tell them? Right now you're at 11% here in Indiana. What do you tell the average Hoosier voter, whether it's Indianapolis, West Lafayette? Fort Wayne. You know, and whether or not it's Indiana or California or South Dakota or Florida, vote, vote your conscience. And right now, when the pollster calls you, answer Gary Johnson. What do you, what do you got to fear seeing me on stage? You mentioned during the event that Mitch was the only presidential uh, debate commission member that was supporting you. Have you had further conversations? Well, by supporting that? That, that he definitely recognizes that another voice should be uh, heard and that uh, that this 15% is an arbitrary number. Uh, and I, I applaud him for, um, for hosting this here today. I hope this speaks volumes. How do you know that he's the only one that feels that way? I, I don't. Okay. I don't. Tonight you spoke a lot about government spending. What's your take on agricultural subsidies? Well, uh, for starters, that we would reduce agricultural subsidies by 20%. I mean, for st balance the federal budget, that would be a 20% reduction in agricultural subsidies to go along with everybody, everything else. Specifically, I mean, I do look at ethanol. Uh, specifically, I look at eating habits in this country that uh, have been dictated by agricultural subsidies that create more of one product than something else, and we're all, we all end up consuming it perhaps to the detriment of our health. Mr. Johnson, you're trying to reach out to a younger demographic, and domestic violence and sexual assault is extremely prevalent, especially on college campuses. What can you ensure as president to decrease this epidemic? Will you ensure therapists on campus, resources that these women and men can receive? Well, for starters, and it ends up to be states' issues, but for starters, uh, a president of the United States that understands this issue, I understand this issue, I do. I understand how underreported it is, uh, how difficult it is to get prosecution, how guilty my sex is uh, when it comes to these instances. And um, there's a starter that I don't think has occupied the, the presidency to this point. I, I don't want to take away from Obama either. I, I think he's been very thoughtful. If I have issues with Obama, it's just that the actions don't match the words. But I do think he's been very thoughtful. Governor Johnson, what do you think about the racial uh, tension in the country? And that it's real. That it's that it's another one of those topics. Uh, what I say to people is, what I say to people is, all lives matter. That gets everybody kind of warm, I guess. But then follow that up with, Black lives matter, and Black lives matter, and here's why. They're getting shot at the rate of six times that as if as as whites. When it comes to drug-related crime, if you are of color, there's a four times more likelihood you're going to end up behind bars than if you're not. What's not being recognized is that blacks are being pushed up against the car. Blacks are being agitated to go stop it, and and just like just like, but we're not getting shoved up against the car. And so this is a discrimination that is existing, and we've all had our heads in the sand on it. I've had my head in the sand on it. And President of the United States, just, just the awareness and how we can as a country come together. But it starts with awareness. It starts about the fact that we talk about it and recognize it. One more. What's your, what's your message to our millennials? Why should they vote for you? Well, um, I do believe that I reflect what most millennials believe. That's what I believe. I believe most millennials recognize that government isn't the answer to everything. 
I think most millennials recognize that choice in life, freedom, liberty, I should be able to decide anything in my life that I want as long as I don't harm others. And I think millennials are particularly in tune with m these military interventions because you're the ones that are being called on the line right now uh, and that they haven't resulted in making the world more safe. They've resulted in men and service women losing their lives, becoming injured, maimed for the rest of their lives. Um, and a, a pitch to millennials too, and you know, it's, it's millennials recognize crony capitalism. I want to say crony capitalism and free trade are at the opposite ends of the spectrum. They're opposites. Crony capitalism is when government picks winners and losers. Government shouldn't pick winners and losers. That's free market. So that's my pitch. That's thank my you pitch all. to everybody. Anyway, thank you all so much. Thank you. Really thank you. Thank you. President Daniel's <laughs> meeting. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you.